Uh, once again, I'm sorry for the technical difficulties, and I hope you were all able to watch that. And I think that shows you sort of what the, the Masters has to offer. So the big thing about uh, the online Masters cybersecurity is it's built by the University of London with academic direction by Royal Holloway University, who have a history within this particular core subject. And the main thing about cybersecurity is it's one of those vastly growing fields, whether it's personal companies, large businesses, military, defense, everyone now worries about cyber attacks and we will show you the ways to build defenses within that. So the course is a brand new course. It's been running on the Royal Holloway previously under information security, and then it's been relaunched online with the University of London as cyber security. It's not exactly the same course, but it's built off the foundation of the previous course and with the course leaders who have been running uh, the, the course previously in information security. It comprises of 10 core modules and one project module. And it's 100% online, with the main thing being it's self-paced and flexible. So we would look, be looking for, for each module of the 10 core modules, 12 to 15 hours of study a week. Now, you can do up to two modules at once, but as each module is 12 to 15 hours, we would say that the main thing to focus on there is that if you do both at once, that's 24 to 30 hours of study. So you would effectively be a full-time student. If you're doing a 40 hour, 50 hour week, you're taking yourself up to 40 hours with sort of 30 hours of study. So you're talking a 70, 80 hour week, uh, which obviously, is, is fast paced. So a lot of people go into this saying, I want to complete it in the, five, the, the two years that it's possible to complete it in. It is two years that it can be completed in, but we also give you up to five years to keep it flexible around yourself. Uh, next slide, please. So what you'll be learning. So cybersecurity foundations. <clears throat> so cybersecurity foundations is an introductory to a broad range of concepts. So what you'll be looking within this is how companies build security systems and move them forward and build security networks, whether that's looking at agents, hacking, networking, uh, that's sort of the main focus within this course. my screen let's go uh sir you'll apply the ideas and skills within this module and it's to gain a full understanding of the whole array of what cybersecurity has to offer we also have cybersecurity management and governance um this we're looking at sort of the legality of cybersecurity how it functions uh where it fits within sort of business hierarchy and how to overcome it uh, cybercrime, looking at sort of the policing of cybersecurity. Uh, once again, that's looking at sort of the different ways systems are hacked, uh, whether that's malware, agents getting within a system, um, and sort of the, the cybercrime environment, and how this is an ever-evolving field. And it, it very much focuses on how when one sort of scam or hack sort of 
uh, becomes popular, then the hackers are constantly evolving. And I think that's one of the big things of why cybersecurity is such a developing field, because as soon as there's a way to sort of stop one hack or one, one sort of attack on a system, then people are constantly working to find another way to, to attack a system. Uh, applied cryptography, this will be a little bit more of a technical role. Uh, we look at the role of cryptography in supporting security uh, and different tools to uh, face that. So there will be a technical element within this course, but the one thing I would say is this isn't a technical degree. We're not looking for people who can code within Python or Q or R um, and who, or C+, who have sort of a technical background. If you do have those skills, then the nice thing is that you can build the, on those and sort of put those skills that you have within uh, your workload, but it, it, that's not something that we'll be teaching. Um, we're, we're not a computer science degree. Uh, we're not like people with a maths background or sort of a computer science background. We are teaching sort of more of a management level of how to, hack, uh, how to manage uh, cybersecurity. Uh, next, we're going into network and infrastructure security. So once again, this will be looking at building infrastructures and networks, keeping them safe, how to manage them, how to operate them, and sort of how critical that infrastructure is. And if there's any leaks within that, how uh, people will uh, use those leaks to sort of gain access to your system. So how to build a system and how to keep that system safe and stop vulnerabilities within it. Uh, so infrastructure looks at, we'll be looking at sort of more large computer infrastructure on a whole, then computer system security. This will take it down to sort of the, the micro side of looking at one system or one computer system, whether that's a single laptop or sort of a small mechanism for a small company, which is a couple of laptops, a couple of phones all linked to one account. We look at security mechanisms in sort of the modern computer systems. Once again, covering that this field is constantly evolving and changing, and that to stay on top of cybersecurity, you have to evolve and change within it. We'll look at software and application security. Obviously, you have your networks, you have your computer systems, and then the third part of that is software. Often, a lot of the software isn't designed or built by yourself. Uh, sometimes it will be, so we'll look at if it is built by yourself, how on the web and the cloud, how you keep those systems safe, but also when using third parties, how do you stop hacks and vulnerabilities from other parties uh, looking to exploit and gain access from your system? Security behavioral change is what we'll move on to next. Uh, one of the biggest uh, issues with uh, security of any system isn't uh, hacking or malware. It's actually sort of personal security stopping people from gaining access. So human error is normally the easiest way into a system whether that's someone leaving a network unprotected or whether that's someone opening an email they shouldn't or sending an email they shouldn't. And quite often the easiest way into a system is through the error of, of human intervention. And we'll look at the relationships between sort of security and human behavior and how to build an online culture to keep your system safe, the what to do's, what not to do's, and how to set up privacy within a system. And that will move us on to information privacy. Uh, mainly the meaning of what is data privacy? What are you trying to keep safe? Uh, are there different layers of security within your system? Um, what are the legal constraints facing an organization? What can you do and what can't you do to keep people in and out? And technology and supporting privacy. So what can you build within a system to make that system secure and private? And last of all, research methods for cyber, for cyber security. The research method brings you onto your project. So. A lot of people won't have written sort of um, reports in sort of the procedural way of how to uh, add footnotes, how to um, proper, uh, properly cite resources. So research methods for cybersecurity covers those elements to building the project. And the project's a major individual piece of work which demonstrates the understanding of chosen specific areas of cybersecurity. This is very personal to yourself. So. Some people will have a bit more direction to it, and some people will go into this course very much aware of what they want to be building within uh, the sort of constraints of the project. And then we will still give them a tutor to guide them as it still has to meet certain criteria.
but uh, we do give you a lot of flexibility within uh, the project and we want it to be something personal to yourself that you can build and enjoy building. Uh, next slide, please. So admissions routes. There are two entry routes onto this course. Uh, you do need to meet a certain couple of criteria. Uh, English language is whether e either route you go down, you will have to meet English language as a requirement. There are a couple of different ways to, eat, to, to meet the English language as are below. Uh, IELTS, Pearson, Cambridge Certificate, uh, the TOEFL, Duolingo, uh, all of them have slightly different criteria, um, which you would need to meet. Uh, in rare cases, uh, if you haven't got one of these, you could put forward a case of why uh, you, you don't think you, you do need, and we will review it. That could be that you've previously come off of a degree which was completely studied in English, uh, but we do look at English on a case by case. But in most cases, it would have to meet one of those previous six criteria. Um, so English language has to be met either way, but the other two routes in are direct entry and performance-based route. Di direct entry uh, is having a UK second lo lower degree or a 2-2 degree or above. Uh, that would be in sort of the American GPA system out of four, a 2.6 GPA or above. And then the performance-based route is a UK third class degree or a 2.6 GPA in America. Um, and we look at professional experience and qualifications. Now, the main difference between the two degrees or the, sorry, the, the main difference between the two entry pathways is the outcome of them is always the same. You will get a master's uh, in cybersecurity from the University of London but you would have to complete two modules to transfer onto the full master's program if you're doing the performance rate um, route. Whereas with the direct entry route, you would automatically go straight onto the full master's. Uh, next slide, please. So the program structure. Uh, I've covered a little bit of this previously, but uh, as I say, the course can be studied in anywhere between two and five years. Uh, it's self-paced and flexible. And what it means by this is that we give you uh, about 12 to 15 hours of study a week, but how you do that 12 to 15 hours of study is completely flexible to, your, to you. We do break it into weekly installments, but whether you get ahead of the workload, uh, do sort of 30 hours in two weeks and take a week off, we don't uh, sort of, pace you, we, we give you a guideline, but it's for you to follow, uh, which means that you can fit it around your workload. We also don't have any live sessions, so they're recorded. And what that means is that there's no time you need to be online making the course completely flexible. So you can do a maximum, as I said, of two modules per term, but that would be double the, the amount of work. So 12 to 15 hours for one module, 24 to 30 hours of study. And the curriculum has three points when you can leave. There's the PG certificate, the PG diploma, and the master, and the four masters. So if you complete one core module and three optional, giving you 60 credits, that would leave you at the PG cert. Um, sorry, you would need to do 60 credits of a one core module and three optional modules. Uh, PG diploma, there's one core module and you'd have to complete 120 credits of seven optional modules. And for the full masters, uh, you need to complete all 10 modules and the project, giving you 180 credits. Um, the final project itself is worth 30 credits, and each module is worth 15 credits, making up sort of the 60, 120, and 180 that, that gets you the full, um, full masters. Now, the uh, Tutor Sport is hosted a couple of times a week and is hosted live. Once again, everything is recorded. So if you do miss anything, we don't mandate it that you have to be online and you aren't penalized for missing anything. Um, and you have live, live tutor support with Q&A sessions, but all of the lectures and learning material is delivered through our online portal, which is all pre-recorded, so you can be online at any time that suits you. Uh, next slide, please. So next, I'll, we'll take you on to the program cost. So the course is anywhere between 9,000 and 12,000 uh, pounds. We break this depending on geographical location. So any band A country is 9,000 and a band B country is 12,000. 
The course is pay as you go. So once again, you can pay module by module. You can pay for the full cost of the advance uh, in advance of starting, and you can pay the full nine or 12,000, depending on which band you fall within. But most of our students will decide to go pay as you go, which means it would be 750 pounds for a band A country and a thousand pounds per module for a band B country. And then the dissertation, which is 30 credits, not 15, would be 1,500 for a band A country or 2,000 for a band B country. It's paid directly to the University of London via the student portal, or uh, in certain countries, I know that uh, there can be issues moving money out, out of the country through a sort of bank payment, and it can be done by larger amounts by a bank transfer. So we also have a system called Flywire, which can help um, get around this problem where you can make a bank transfer for uh, different amounts. And the registration payment deadline is the 26th of September. So uh, we will come on to sort of deadlines, but once again, that is a hard deadline and we do need all payments made by that deadline. We start in the course on the 10th of October. Uh, next slide, please. So once again, uh, I'll just leave this up two seconds uh, whilst everyone can sort of scan through it. These are the country A uh, countries. So if you're on this list, that means you'd be paying the 9,000. Um, uh, so please have a quick scan through. And in a second, I'll show you the band B countries. And if you're on that list, obviously you'd be paying the, the 12,000. Uh, so can we move to the, the band B list? Um, and, and once again, I'll leave this up for sort of 30 seconds, just sort of uh, have, a, have a scan through. Um, if there's any sort of uh, query, once again, please reach out to me after the webinar and I'll be able to confirm which country you would be in. Uh, the band A and B is also based on a uh, geographical location of where you live and I believe sort of pay tax and sort of where, where you, your sort of country of residence. So if you are a holder of sort of two um, sort of national, um, two sort of dualities, um, sorry, I don't know if that's the right word, but um, if, if you hold sort of two passports for different countries, uh, you can't choose between the two. So if you say hold a US um, passport and a Nigerian passport, but you live in the US, you can't uh, use the Nigerian passport to sort of um, choose the location you want to be of band A and B. It's based on geographical location, not on sort of um, uh, nationality or, or anything like that. It, it's literally based on geographical location. So, um, it, it, that, that's how we sort of break uh, the, the, band, the banding down. Uh, next slide, please. So what are we looking for? So our ideal student. Um, so I've, I've covered a little bit about uh, what we'll be teaching. And the next um, uh, thing is, that, is this course right for you? The students we would be looking for are people who are looking to move into a role much like business information security officers, uh, security consultants, security specialists. Um, so anyone working within cybersecurity, if you already have sort of a technical degree and you're working within uh, one of those roles and you're looking to move up into sort of a management role where you'd be looking at sort of data protection and network security, anything along those roles uh, would, be, would be useful. But also, even if you're not from a sort of security background, uh, I think this role is sort of interesting for anyone looking to make a move across. Uh, every country in the world is currently sort of having issues with sort of online cybersecurity. And every country, uh, every company, no matter big or small, uh, is designating more resources into sort of uh, security of their systems. So I think a good example of this is uh, there's currently a show on, on Channel 4, uh, which is kind of Simon Peggin, which is currently covering exactly this topic. Um, and I, I think that they're making dramas about sort of cybercrime because it, it's an area that's of interest. And I think that um, it's an area that a lot of people don't understand. And that's why large companies and small companies and governments and uh, military, everyone is looking for specialists within this field because everyone is looking to not be attacked and not have data stolen. Um, so I, I think data is sort of key and sort of keeping data safe is what every company is looking for. So we look at people looking to learn practical applied skills, uh, skills in the cybersecurity field and looking to 
evolve and build as the skills evolve, though meet the latest industry demands. Uh, this is one of those industries that's constantly in flux. Uh, what we learn will quickly develop into something else. And we're looking to teach you uh, the best ways to move along with, with an ever-changing industry. Uh, next slide, please. So now we're going to go to the first Q&A. Uh, as I say, um, I've seen some of the questions pop up about sort of financing and things. Uh, we, we've covered that already, but and there's more covered in the second half of the course about the application process. Uh, so you can start an application now. Uh, we are open till Monday for applications for October intake. And you can book an appointment to speak with me um, or at my clockwise link, which is on my email. Uh, I believe after this, an email will go out from our marketing team, which will have my clockwork link on it. So if anyone wants to book a meeting with me to discuss the course further, then please do, and I'll be here to reach out. So the first question is, what's the difference between taking the course uh, online and taking it on campus? And is it the same certificate? Uh, so we don't run this as a campus course. Uh, we've previously run as I say, the um, information security is through Royal Holloway, but this course itself, uh, th there is no online, sorry, on-campus version of it. So that, that's the main difference. Um, th there's no sort of um, uh, alternative to it. Uh, the certificate though, what I will say, is a certificate awarded by the University of London. And it's not a, online certificate, it doesn't state that it's online. This is a full master's qualification that uh, holds all the awarding and merits of a master's qualification. So uh, if, if that's sort of one of your worries that there's a difference between the two because of sort of wording, it will be exactly the same. Uh, it will be a master's in cybersecurity awarded by the University of London. And the next question, can online students be able to join the walking graduation ceremony on campus? Uh, yes, we hold a uh, graduation at the Barbican Centre in London. Uh, obviously, not everyone will be able to make it across. We have lots of international students, so getting to the UK is one of the reasons people study online. Uh, but that being said, uh, people do want to make it across. It is a big day. So we do hold a graduation ceremony, full gown and cap, uh, give you your certificate. Um, and yeah, we hold that at the Barbican Centre, which is a lovely old building in uh, central London. Um, so yeah, please do come down once you graduate and, and we will do that. That being said, if you can't make it, we do also uh, make sure everyone gets all their certificates and transcripts, uh, whether they're sort of recorded delivery out to you, we will make sure if you can't make it that you will still get all the certificates, certification that you've worked so hard for and transcripts. Uh, proof of your English proficiency. This will be demonstrated by completing a test or submitting a letter from an employer confirming that English has been your main working language for at least 18 months. Um, so as I say, we, we look at English on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, in most cases, we would be looking uh, for one of the English language certificates. Um, <clears throat> now, if an employer does, um, confirm you've been working for 18 months, that may meet the requirements, but it, it is looked at case by case, uh, probably looking at if it's your primary working language or if you work in uh, uh, work a bit in a language, uh, whether you work within that country. So that is looked at so case by case and it's such a, a broad question. Uh, to be sure, one of those certificates is the easiest way. Duolingo can be booked within a couple of days uh, and almost have your results um, immediately. So if, if you are wanting to start the course, that's probably the safest way, um, but it's not sort of the only way. You, you can sort of uh, look for other routes, but it is more risky and there's no guarantees within it. Uh, will the modules contain Zoom recorded videos? Uh, so we run everything through the Coursera platform and then there's the uh, University of London's uh, online platform as well. Uh, I don't believe they're run through Zoom. I think they're pre-recorded and they're sort of embedded videos within the course content. Uh, I trust that Coursera participants are commonly based in a variety of time zones. Would you by chance know 
if the educators, in addition to support, usually facilitate one-to-one -one discussions outside of the regular UK work hours. Um, this, I think, is a uh, hard one to answer. So we, we, do, we are a UK-based university, so most of our working hours will be in. You can book in times with tutors, but I think that will be very dependent on the flexibility of the tutor's workload and, and what they have to offer. Um, I, I'm not saying it's not possible to do that, but also I wouldn't want to say that you can book time whenever you want because it, it will be the middle of the night here and our academics do sort of have their own workloads to meet. Um, but that being said, you can always make contact via sort of email and get questions answered, which if you can't book in meetings at times that are convenient for you, there are other systems in place to make sure that everything can get answered. Uh, is, there, is there a bachelor's integrated option? Uh, no, this is a straight master's course. Well, as I said, with the application process, we are looking for people who already hold a bachelor's degree. And we're not looking to sort of um, take on uh, sort of bachelor's to master's. This is just a sort of post bachelor's, uh, post -bachelor's course that goes straight into a master's qualification. Is this the only time when the program is starting? The next intake will start, as I say, on the 10th of October. But that being said, we will run two a year. The next one after that will be April and then the following October again. So we will be hosting uh, two different intakes per year with the next one starting uh, next month. Uh, do you have a sample template of how the master cybersecurity certificate looks and can we see? Uh, not so far, this will be the first intake of the course. So uh, we haven't had a graduating class. The uh, template will probably look very much like all of the other University of London certificates, just with a, a different name upon it, but a different course name, and obviously your name. Understand the application deadline is the 26th of September. There is quite an amount of documents to prep, at least in my case. May I please understand what happens if we commerce uh, the applications? Sorry, uh, the, the registration is the 26th of September. Uh, the application deadline is Monday, so you have until the 12th of September. I will be going through the documents that are required in sort of the second half of the webinar. Um, so we'll, we'll leave uh, sort of the, the rest of that question for uh, when, when I talk through the documents. But the, the deadline is, is a hard deadline. Our academic team need to review everything. So if the documents aren't in by the 12th, then uh, there might be the chance uh, if one document is being chased for our academics to replace, for them to chase it um, and our application team. But we are looking for, um, we are looking for uh, all applications to be fully submitted uh, by that period so that we have a time to get all offers out before registration closes on the 26th. Uh, will there be a written distance learning on the degree, as I've heard that it's valued less than other normal ones? Uh, as, I, as I said previously, um, this course is not stated on its sort of transcript or certification that it's a online course. Uh, it holds all the weight of a full master's qualification. So the only reason that anyone would know that it is studied online is as if you were to tell them. Uh, I've checked on the Coursera website and one module study and exam duration terms is 10 weeks. If that's correct, then six months we can do two terms, correct? Uh, as I say, um, there is the option to do, we would look for most students to probably do one module at a time if they're in full-time work, but there is the option to do two if you can fit it in. So uh, you, you can do either one or two modules at a time, depending on how quickly you are looking to, to move through the course. Uh, so will there be any benefits of my Google IT supports courses and my certification like uh, um, other certification like discounts and credits? You can apply for, once you've been offered a place onto the course, 
there's a part of our website where you can request um, recognition for prior learning. Uh, much like the English, this is looked on case by case and there's no guarantees. Uh, it will depend on how closely the modules that you are looking to sort of discount match um, what you've done. So the certification would probably need to be pretty closely matched to the, the skills being learned. And it would also uh, need to be to master's level qualification. So having studied, say you're looking at sort of cryptography or sort of cybercrime, uh, you may have studied uh, a sort of two week course within cybercrime. This is a 10 week um, master's qualification. So it, it, depending on what you've studied, if you have a sort of hefty professional qualification within cybercrime, then that may mean that you can sit out one of the modules, but it, it would need to be something substantial and it would need to cover the same topics that we cover within ours. Uh, so if you do have something, you can, um, you can look for recognition for prior learning. It is something that we offer, uh, but just because you've covered a similar topic doesn't 100% also mean that you would um, necessarily get that recognition. It is looked at on case by case. So you can take a complete four to eight modules in one year. Uh, yes, you can take anywhere between four and eight modules within the year, um, depending on your, your workload and uh, how much time you're looking to uh, commit to the course. The performance-based admissions route, when can we expect a decision on from administration, administ admissions? Sorry. Um, so the course uh, are, are currently uh, reviewing all of the, the applications that have been made. Uh, the closer we get to deadline, probably the longer it will take, as that's when we get the largest sort of influx of um, uh, students applying. Uh, we try and get everything rolled around within a couple of weeks, but that will be very dependent on uh, whether your application is completed properly, uh, how many applications we have in, um, and if we need to request anything further from you. We, we have had a lot of applications with absolutely no documents attached. So we still have to review those, but we also then have to go back to all of those students and ask them to submit the documents. Without documents, we won't be able to make an offer because they're the, the proof that you've met the sort of academic integrity that we look for. So we, um, we, we do review all of those, but they, they do sort of take time. And then we have to go back and uh, request what further documentation we require. So um, if everything is submitted, uh, for a standard application through the uh, regular pathway. Uh, we, we look for everything to be a couple of weeks. With the performance-based pathway, it, it does come down to how much um, information we, we require. If you've got sort of a third class degree and it's just off of a 2-2, then it might once again be a very quick process. If we are having to contact ex-employers to find out what you've learned and what standard of students and what sort of professional application you're putting together, once again, uh, much, much more labor intensive from our side. So uh, I, I wouldn't be able to give you sort of a, a timeline on that. Okay, uh, we have a few more questions that have come in, but I'm aware of time. We've only got sort of 15 minutes left. So what I'll do is I'm gonna move on uh, with, um, with the webinar. And then um, if, if anyone has any further questions and I'll hopefully get to the questions that have been asked at the end, but otherwise I don't, I don't wanna run out of time. Uh, so next slide, please. So the application process. Uh, so as I said, that there are only a few days left on the application. We, we are looking for our October intake for application to close on the 12th of September, which is uh, next Monday. So we're talking sort of six, day time, six days time. Um, the link at the top will take you through to the University of London website, and this will have the apply now link. Uh, it's halfway down the page. It's this blue box and uh, that you click that says apply now, and it will give you sort of a couple of options, which is what awarding level you're looking for and the entry route. So if you're going in through the direct route or through the performance-based route. Um, 
and then apply now. Then across the top, once you start applying, there'll be a few different uh, tabs you need to fill out. Uh, once again, uh, you can submit your application without uh, sort of filling all these out. But if we don't have all this information, uh, all it means is we'll have to come back to you. So uh, the, the one thing I would say with very little time left is please don't try and cut corners because it would lead to more chance of not being accepted on the course. So there's less than a week until the deadline. So we need your personal information or your study details of what you're looking to study, your personal details. Um, and then we have an action, a section on equal opportunities. Uh, this is where we would look uh, to know sort of anything we know for sort of safeguarding reasons. So we would look into sort of disabilities um, to make sure that we are offering uh, equal opportunities. So um, this is where we get you to sort of fill out gender and uh, any information that I think uh, we need from you so that we don't sort of um, misgender people and sort of uh, fill out uh, because we, we want to sort of um, give equal opportunities to everyone, which is why that's also a very important box for everyone to sort of fill out. Uh, then we look at your education and employment on the next two tabs. We don't look for a CV uh, as one of the documents we don't want you to upload. We do it through our employment and our education. Um, with the education, we do look for the certification because it's important that we can clarify everything. Um, then there's accreditation. Uh, access arrangements, um, what though those two are sort of uh, a couple of questions to be answered there, sort of more legal sides to everything. Um, documents, and this is the most important bit almost, uh, the documents which are on the next page, which we'll go through, we, we do need all of those documents. Um, without them, we can't make the decision and there are only six days left, less than a week left to application. And then the declaration. The declaration is just confirming that you are giving us true and honest information and that everything you look to uh, submit is, is the truth as far as you know it. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, application checklist. Uh, so these are the documents that you do need. It's free to apply. So there's, there's nothing that sort of is required from um, your end financially. You don't need to pay anything until you get accepted onto the course and you register. So if you don't have anything, you still make the application uh, and you, you don't get offered a place, there's no cost to you. So it's always worth putting in the application to make sure. We need a scanned copy of your ID. This would normally be sort of passport, uh, national card, birth certificate, but we need a scanned copy of ID. The supporting statement is only 250 words. It's your reason for why you're looking to take the course. We're looking for something quite short and snappy of why you'd be a good applicant for the course and why you're looking to do the course. Scan copy of academic transcripts and academic certificates. We also need your official copies. Um, sort of, if you don't have them, please upload what you've got. But in most cases, uh, if it's sort of a screenshot of, uh, of a web page or something that might confirm what you studied, if it's not the official transcript and the official certificate from your bachelor's degree, um, it's very unlikely that we would be able to use it to make an offer of an academic place. We give you the option to uh, upload a resume, but as I said previously, we do have a tab that's for um, your, your work background, which we do need filled out. So the option isn't to upload a resume to not fill out the work background. You can fill out, a give us a resume as well as optionally filling out, as well as filling out the um, work background but filling that tab out isn't optional. It is information that we require. And then any professional certificates. Um, this is most important for people going through the professional pathway, but also anyone who has any certificates that are of interest that you think could strengthen your application, please do upload them. Um, although we make the offers on places of bachelors alone, if you have a large history of doing different uh, online certificates, if you've done lots of things with Coursera previously, all companies that aren't Coursera, um, Google Docs, Facebook um, have, have also launched a lot of uh, sort of online certificates that people have been taking. Anything work related that you've been offered, uh, professional or sort of online, please upload all those certificates for anything that's relevant that would make a stronger case for you being offered a place. Uh, and then last of all, English language. Everyone does have to meet the English language requirements. So please upload any English language certificate you have. Um, or, or any sort of document to 
contest your, your use of English and then the petition will be made from there. Uh, next slide, please. Now, if you are unsure about any of the documents that are required on the university, uh, on the Coursera website, uh, the web page is at the bottom there. We do on the admissions tab have this admissions checklist. It, it will, if you click on each of the boxes, it will drop down and it will tell you exactly what we would be looking for. Um, what's required a, pleasure, a motivational letter, what evidence for your full name and date of birth uh, are we accept, uh, and, and what we consider to be sort of a usable transcript. So please don't go on there. Please do go on there, have a look through that and make sure you're submitting the right documents because any back and forth between us having to request further documents will cause time delays and could stop you from being off your place as we're so close to the deadline. Uh, and once again, there's a box at the bottom there about recognition of prior learning. Um, there's information on both our website on Coursera and on the University of London website, which will tell you more about recognition of prior learning uh, if that's a route that you're looking to go down. Uh, next slide, please. So registration process and next steps. So the next step would be to complete your application if you haven't already, and then that will go off and you will get the offer of a place or, or you won't. Um, once you've got the offer, then we have the uh, registration. So you need to log into the student portal, click register, na register now, and then register for the modules. Once you've registered, then you can make the payment. Uh, as I say, you can study up to two modules per session or one, you can select what you want to. Uh, but you do need to register by the 26th of September. If you don't register by the 26th, once again, the place won't be held for you. You won't be able to register and pay after that deadline. So please do make sure that everything is done. Uh, don't think that we'll give you even a leeway because uh, I don't believe that will be the case. So please do make sure if you do have any issues, either registering or paying, please do contact me as soon as possible so that I can help resolve them. Um, what are my next steps after I register and pay? When do I receive access to the modules? So once you've registered, a few weeks before the course, you'll get a orientation course. Uh, this will take you three to four hours to complete. It's a sort of a run through the program. It gives you sort of policies um, and sort of the student handbook and everything that you'll require for the course and about studying. So it's an important piece. Uh, it, it's not sort of a short piece. It does take three or four hours of commitment to get through. So please make sure you set aside time for that. And then on the 10th, you'll receive access to the first module uh, and you'll move, move forward from there. And the courses will start on the 10th and you'll be part of the online masters. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, receiving your degree certificate. Uh, so as I say, there's three sort of exit points um, on the course. Uh, there's the postgrad certificate, postgrad diploma, and then the full masters. When you complete the full masters, which is the full 180 credits, the 10 modules, and the uh, final project, that's when you're awarded and you'll come down to the University of London. Uh, the Barbican is in East London, sort of, or sort of bank area of East London. Um, it's a big sort of conference center and sort of um, music hall, uh, and we'll do sort of the, the full gown and robe, and you can receive the physical copy of your uh, documentation and wear, wear everything and sort of, bring your family down photographs and everything uh, as you would with any university course uh, and have the graduation in London. Uh, alternative, as I say, you will receive a physical copy by mail if, if you aren't able to attend. Uh, next slide, please. So key dates. Uh, so once again, I'm gonna run through these again because th these are really important. So uh, next slide, please. Applications open on the 27th of June, we're, we're way past that. And the application deadline is September the 12th. Next Monday, I can't say that enough. If applications aren't completed by the 12th of September, uh, then you would have to reapply again for our April intake. So if you don't want to miss out on that and you do want to start on the 10th of October, then please do make sure you apply as soon as possible um, so that we can get you an offer letter out so that you can register by the 26th. But the reason these are so set in stone is we are moving with a very, very tight deadline. We already had a lot of applications we're working through, which is why we set the 12th so that we can get the offers out before the 26th so that everyone can get their inductions done by the 10th. So we, we do need to sort of make these clear deadlines so that if they are missed, then unfortunately uh, you, you won't be able to move forward. So please do get your applications in by Monday 
12th of September. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, that rounds up. Uh, I think we've got about six or seven minutes left. Uh, sorry that with technical difficulties at the beginning, uh, we, we are running sort of a, a bit lower uh, on time for the Q&A than I would have thought, but I can see a couple of questions have gone in. Uh, so the first question is how, is, how do you support trans and LGBT students? I'm concerned about being named and gendered correctly by faculty and would look forward to university having established procedures in case of interpersonal, uh, interpersonal incidents. So as I say, uh, when filling out your application, uh, I believe there is a section within this. Um, and also when you go through the student portal uh, and set up um, your sort of profile within, um, th then we do sort of uh, cover, cover this within it. Uh, if, if you do have any sort of further questions uh, regarding this, could you contact me directly? Um, and then I will, uh, get in touch with one of my students and I will give you, I will be able to give you a much more in-depth answer. Um, this isn't an area I work specifically within. I do know we do look at safeguarding as a very important sort of factor within this. So I will be able to answer any questions on that and I'll be able to put sort of your mind at ease in the ways we will be able to help. Um, so. Uh, what percentage of the course is supported by live tutors? Uh, so that's a very hard question to answer. The live tutors are there for sessions, but some people will use them and some won't. Um, so they are there for sort of Q&A and there are ways to make contact with faculty, uh, with people all around the world. Uh, it, it, the course is designed to be able to be taken without having any live elements at all. So you will be given obviously a academic tutor to help you with your dissertation uh, course. Um, but the course we try to lay it out so that it is an area of self-study. Um, and also through our system, you can contact and help each other. Uh, but the course is designed to sort of be uh, directed by yourself. Um, not necessarily sort of all academic um, support. We do have live sessions with tutors within it, uh, but they are at specific times. And then outside of that, uh, you, you'd have to uh, contact our faculty for help. Uh, if I apply for my master in cybersecurity, can I get a diploma certificate after successfully completing eight modules required for the PD, uh, for the DIP cert in cybersecurity? I mean, without exiting the master's program. Uh, so you, you wouldn't be able to get both. Um, you, we, we award certification on completion of, uh, of elements. So as you go through, um, you, you sort of, you can sort of spend your credits on, on what you've achieved. So you would move through until you've got the, the postgrad certificate. We wouldn't then award you the certificate unless you drop out of the course. So you don't get the certificate and then upgrade and then upgrade to the masters. Um, the, the aim of the course is to work towards whatever you're looking to work towards. So uh, if you applied and got the certificate, that would be upon leaving the course. And then uh, once you've uh, sort of, you, you could then reapply for a different course using the credits you have there. But uh, that, that sort of case by case of whether you're going on to, onto a different course. Uh, the, the certificate isn't automatically uh, awarded because the, the aim is to sort of gain the, the maximum qualification that you can. Uh, same question was answered earlier, but it must be missed. Is program available on campus? Uh, we don't run a campus version. We run, Royal Holloway run a sim similar um, course, which is um, information security, but cybersecurity is solely something that's delivered online uh, by the University of London. Uh, so I believe that's all of the questions answered. Uh, we've got about two minutes left. So if anyone does have any final questions that you want to send through, I will try and get through them uh, in, in the last couple of minutes. But otherwise, okay, I've just had a couple more things come through. Uh, how are the assessments conducted and what are the criteria to complete them successfully? 
Uh, each module is slightly different, but most modules will have exams at the end of them and they'll have a couple of different um, sort of tasks set throughout. They might be sort of online tests, they might be written work, a bit of coursework, or they might be um, a, a final exam, but most of the courses will be sort of exam led. And I think once again, we have about one minute left and then we'll call time. So if anyone does have any final questions, we have about 45 seconds left. So please send them across now. And as I said, if anything hasn't been answered or you want any more depth of information, there will be an email going out, which has uh, my clockwise link on it. Please do contact me and I will be here to answer any questions on any sort of deep subjects that you can. Uh, most importantly, please do get your applications in by the 12th. That, that's the most important deadline coming up. You have six days left. The application can be completed in as little as so 20 minutes if you have all your documents with you. So please do get that. Uh, yes, application for the university admissions is free, um, but there, there is no option to move between campus study and online. This is a solely online course. We don't do a campus version of it. So it would be online study with no option to mix between the two. Uh, Thank you all for your time today. Uh, we've just hit six o'clock. So it has been uh, great speaking with you. Please contact me if you need anything. I'll be here to help. But otherwise, uh, have nice days, evenings, no matter where you are in the world. And contact me if you need anything. Thank you for joining me today.